Hi, my name is Inês, and there is the name of a very famous Portuguese queen, Inês de Castro, a symbol of eternal, gruesome love. Why am I telling you that? Because this month marks the 667th anniversary of her death, and I'm making a Inês de Castro costume while telling you a little more about her story. But before that, there's an important disclaimer. There are no portraits of Inês from the time. The closest you can get from what she actually looked like is from her tomb, and I'm not going to recreate what she's wearing there, because it's a surcoat, like this one, with fur. And I don't like those, so I'm going to make my own thing, backed up by what I could find about the Iberian Peninsula at the time. And now, here is Pedro and Inés's love story. It all started in Galicia between 1320 and 1325, with Inés being born as a great-granddaughter of Sancho IV of Castile, by a line of only illegitimate birds. This means she was noble enough to sit with the cool kids, but not be an actual cool kid. Then in 1340, she moves to Portugal as a lady-in-waiting to Constança Manuel, a cool kid from Castile, who was getting married to Prince Pedro, son of Afonso IV of Portugal. It said that Pedro immediately fell in love with Inês. Now, extramarital affairs were pretty common in royalty. Since those marriages were exclusively political, it was actually expected of kings to find love and happiness with other women. Not that the queens could do the same, though. They were just too busy being pregnant and dealing with their own emotions or whatever women do to forget the lack of affection from their spouses. But anyway, Pedro marries Constanza, doesn't care about her, nothing new for her given she had been married to the king of Castile at the age of seven, and two years later was locked in a castle for some political reason and saw her marriage being dissolved so that her ex-husband could marry a 15-year-old girl. And now finally, at 24, she is being married to a prince from another country, just to be ignored and have him fall in love with her friend. But what could she do? Pedro and Inés were totally in love. And Inés was beautiful, blonde and big-breasted. Yes, that's how she was described by chronicles and historians. How could he resist her? So, what was wrong with an extramarital affair by a 14th century royal? According to Pedro's father, everything was wrong. It's kind of strange that he was so against it, but funny enough, Afonso is one of the few Portuguese kings who didn't have any known children outside of marriage. Well, he had a lot of half siblings, one of which almost took his throne, so it would make sense that he was a bit against illegitimate children. And because of that, in 1344, Inés was exiled to Castile in an attempt to separate her from Pedro. Then, unfortunately, Constanza died a year later, after giving birth to her and Pedro's third child. But now, nothing could stop just widow Pedro from bringing Inês back to Portugal. Except from his father, of course. But even so, Pedro brought Inês back, and they stayed 100 kilometers away from his father, where Inês had four kids, and Pedro had a lot of fun. Actually, it wasn't all fun and games. It's said that Afonso tried to make Pedro marry again with other noble women during those years, but without success. What was turning successful, though, was the conspiracy against the Castilian king at the time, not the one who had married Constanza and locked her in a castle, that man's son, so Pedro's wife's ex-husband's son. Also Pedro's nephew. Yes, that 15-year-old girl who married Constanza's ex-husband was Pedro's sister. <laughs> but what did Pedro and Inés have to do about all that? Well, the leaders of that conspiracy were Inés' siblings, and apparently Inés could be quite persuasive towards Pedro, who was already considering joining them and claiming the throne of Castile. Now, Afonso, Pedro's father, had had enough beef already with the Kingdom of Castile, and he wasn't going to give up the kind of peace that was being felt just so his son could please his lover, so there was only one reasonable thing he could do. On January 7 of 1355, the king and his men took advantage of Pedro being away on a hunting and entered the love nest. They found Inés surrounded by her kids, including her less than one-year-old son, and beheaded her. The legend says the blood she lost stained the stones of the nearby garden, and that her begging tears were enough to create a fountain that is still running to this day on those same stones. When Pedro learned his own father had murdered Inish, he did what any monarch could do in such a situation at the time. He started a civil war against his father. They declared peace seven months later, though, and Afonso died not long after. So on May of 1357, Pedro was declared king of Portugal, and what did he do? Apparently nothing. I mean, he did, 
but he waited three years to declare that he and Inez had married in secret. And if you're waiting for the gruesome part, here it is. It's a myth, but an essential part of this story. It's said that Pedro had Inez's body to be exhumed from her grave in 1361, six years after her death, and arranged the coronation ceremony, giving her a crown and making everyone from the court to pledge allegiance and kiss her decomposing hand. He also captured two of the three counselors who convinced Afonso to kill Inez and sentenced them to death by having their hearts removed with bare hands, one through the chest and the other through the back. I want to add that my grandfather used to tell this story, including a part where Pedro ate these two men hearts on the side. Being all this true or not, Inez was actually exhumed from her grave and buried on a monastery. Pedro never remarried until his death in 1367, and is now buried at the same place, their tombs facing each other, so that when the last judgment comes, their souls will rise and the first thing they'll see is each other and be together for eternity. And to this day, Inez is still known as the one who turned queen after death. Now, let's address some stuff. Why would Pedro and Inez's marriage have to be a secret? Like, why would a marriage be that big of a deal for Afonso? The lineage was safe with Constance's son, and there was no political reason to marry Pedro to someone else. To be fair, Inez wasn't a royal, of course, so not the best fit for a prince, but is that all? Even though her status wasn't that high, she had some royal blood. Most people say the strongest argument against it was their consanguinity. Inez's great-grandfather was also Pedro's grandfather. But really, is that a problem now? It's also said that Afonso tempted Pedro to marry Inez, but Pedro refused, afraid it would be a trap. But what if he actually didn't want to get married? Their supposed secret marriage wasn't taken serious or ever officialized by a pope. There's a possibility that it never happened, and Pedro decided to make it up for some reason we're not aware of. Now, what we do know is that at the time there was already a little boy from another woman, who was born when Pedro was still a prince. It makes this supposed secret marriage and death revenge less of a proof of love and more of some kind of political conspiracy. Anyway, we romanticize a lot of medieval love stories without knowing much about it. For a long time, history was written exclusively by men about other men. How many Don Quixotes messaging their own eagles got their voices heard into history books? We honestly don't know. We would be learning a totally different Western history in school if the voices of non-men and non-white people weren't just shut off. Now focusing again on Pedro and Inês, everything we know about them is from Pedro's perspective. The story is always told with him as the protagonist. There is nothing about Inês other from how she was perceived by other people. We actually don't know what she had to say or what she felt. She may not have loved him. She could be in that relationship just to help her siblings. What if she was afraid of him? He was known as the Ruthless, and honestly, it deserved that name. That whole take off their hearts while the men are still alive may have been true, and if it wasn't, it was definitely inspired by real events. He was not afraid of gore. But I'm not a historian, and this video is the result of a few days of research, so you should take my words with a grain of salt. All this happened more than six centuries ago, and although a lot has changed, I can assure you that there is not one single Portuguese who hasn't heard some version of Pedro and Inez's love story. I'm going to leave you here with some shots of my new costume and your own thoughts about all this. I'm sure you have them. You are of course free to share them in the comments. And that's it. Bye!